on this video, uh, we are going to learn about cash and cash equivalent. We all know that cash and cash equivalent is the first account that we see on our balance sheet or what we call statement of financial positions. We also going to learn about uh, bank reconciliations, the three methods that reconciles the record of the book or the record of the company and versus the record of the bank. Also, we're going to learn about uh, undelivered checks or unreleased checks, post dated checks, stale check, compensating balance, bank overdraft, petty cash fund. Let's start with the term cash. Cash is simply the money of the company. The term cash has three components. The three components are cash on hand, cash in bank, and cash fund. Under cash on hand, this consists of our currencies, our coins, our checks from other companies, checks from customers. This consists of our cash on hand. Cash in bank is where we deposit our collections. This is where we write checks to pay our obligation. Cash fund is certain amount segregated for a certain transactions of the company. Now, let's say for example, we have petty cash fund. A petty cash fund is a fund where we pay our small expenses. Let's say for example, our uh, expenses that we get from our petty cash funds are expenses to employees. We have our office expenses. Also, some companies, um, they segregate a certain amount for their emergency funds, contingency funds. So these are the components of our account cash. The most important thing to know is that this three components of cash are unrestricted in use. Otherwise, if restricted in use, they cannot be classified as cash. Let's say, for example, a cash on hand restricted for purchase of an equipment. Then we cannot classify that amount segregated or restricted for the purchase of the equipment. Then we classify that cash as non-current assets. Another example, if it's restricted for restricted for payment of non-current liability as a non-current asset. Let's talk about cash equivalent. A cash equivalent, these are securities that are easily convertible into cash. These are instruments. These are a piece of paper, a paper that you can convert into cash. Let me give you an example of a cash equivalent. These are the examples of our cash equivalent. Banco Central ng Pilipinas Treasury Bills, Money Market Funds, Time Deposits, Commercial Papers, a Preference Shares with a Specified Date of Redemptions. The most important thing you have to know about the securities to be able to classify this as cash equivalent that this security should fall into the three-month rule. All right, the three month rule is the measurement between your purchase date up to your maturity date. Let me explain that further here. As an accountant, we prepare the financial statement of the company and we date those financial statements at the end of the year, December 31st, unless otherwise the company prepares it in some other days. So December 31st is our what we call financial statement date. Let's say this one is our maturity date. And let's say, for example, right here, we have our purchase. That's our purchase date. To be able to classify these instruments under the cash equivalent, they should fall into three month rule. Let's say, for example, our maturity date is February 14th and our purchase date is, let's say, for example, November 31st. So if it falls into the three month rule, then we can classify that as cash equivalent. Otherwise, if it doesn't fall into the three month rule, then we cannot classify that as a cash equivalent. Let's say, for example, we purchase a commercial paper on July 1st. July 1st up to February 14th, that is more than three months. So we cannot classify this commercial paper as cash equivalent. So if the securities are purchased within the three months, then we classify that as a cash equivalent. Below three months or three months, Okay, so what if we purchase it more than three months? If it's more than three months, 
If it's more than one year, then we classify that security as long-term investment. So if the purchase date up to the maturity date falls into three months, then we classify that securities as cash equivalent. If it's more than three months, but not more than one year, then we classify that as a temporary investment. Temporary investment is a current asset. If it's more than one year, then we classify that as a long-term investment and that is your non-current assets. Always keep in mind what is the requirement of the exam. If the problem requires you just the amount of the cash equivalent, then just show the cash equivalent, okay? It might give you a cash equivalent in cash, but it might only ask you just the amount of cash or just the amount of cash equivalent, or it can ask you both cash and cash equivalent and this is your cash and cash equivalent now let's talk about undelivered checks post dated checks drawn by the company post dated checks received by the company now let's start with undelivered checks undelivered checks is when a company draws a check but not delivered to the payee okay so what happens to the accounting of the undelivered check so let's say for example here let's draw a date on December 17 the company draws the check but delivers the check, let's say for example, January 5th, where the company delivers the check. This is your delivery date. Every time a company draws a check or writes a check, the company will record that transaction. So when the company draws the check on December 17th, the company enters an account, debit accounts payable, and credit to cash and bank. So what happens on your financial statement date, which is December 31st? This is your financial statement date. So as of this date, the pay doesn't have the check. So as of this date, we still have the control. The company still has the control whether to pay the pay or not to pay the suppliers. So as of this date, what we're going to do is to revert it back to cash and bank and revert it back to accounts payable. Because on your financial statement date, we want to show the right amount of our accounts payable and the right amount of our cash in bank. Okay. So what we're going to do is to reverse this entry. So we have an entry of debit to cash in bank and credit to accounts payable. This is to show the right amount of our cash in bank account and our liability, which is the accounts payable on your financial statements. Okay, that's our undelivered checks. Now, post-dated checks drawn by the company. Post-dated checks, these are the checks drawn by the company but dated in the future and delivered to the payee. Let's say, for example, on December 21st, the company draws the check, but dated the check, let's say January 10th. That's the date of the check. And let's say, for example, the company delivers the check to the payee the next day, December 22nd. This is your delivery date. So now what happened to the accounting of our post-dated checks that was drawn by the company? When the company draws the check on December 21st, the company will enter that same way as the company enters on the undelivered checks. So we debit accounts payable and we credit cash in bank. Now, when the company delivers the check on the delivery date right here, we don't have to do anything. This is no entry. The payee cannot do anything with the check yet because the date of the check is January 10th. The payee cannot go to the bank and encash the check until January 10th onwards. So what happened on our December 31st, our financial statement date? On our financial statement date, what we're going to do on this post data checks, we are going to revert it back just like what we did on the undelivered check. We debit cash in bank and we credit accounts payable. We have to show the right amount of our cash in bank accounts and the right amount of our accounts payable or liability. So that's our post data checks draw. All right, post data checks received. On um, post data checks received, these are checks drawn by another company or by a customer, and we receive that post data checks. So what happened on the accounting of this post data check that we receive? Example: We receive. 
a check from a customer for example on december 5th the check is dated january when we receive the checks from the customer though it's post data checks we still have to record the check so when the company received the checks the company will record that as debit to cash in bank and credit to so what happened on our December 31st? The check is dated January 2nd. So on our financial statement 31st, financial statement date, we are going to revert this back to accounts receivable and credit our cash in bank. Because as of this date, we can't do anything on the, the check to show the right amount of our accounts receivable and credit to cash. So that's our undelivered check and post data checks drawn by the company and post data checks received by the company. Mm -hmm.